So let's now look at developing models for ES, and we're going to actually see how the concept of equity curve feedback can be used with armor guards to improve the results of using a single armor guards model. So we have this 125 length window size, which is what did well in SPY also, and we have a 250 window size, which does better for ES than the 500 length, which was the second best length for SPY. So let's go to Trade Station. We're using a very simple system, which is the same one we used for SPY. ML underscore Arma Guard Simple 1. This is with the close minus, the close is less than open filter on the buy and the close greater than open filter on the sell. You can see it right here. Very simple system. And we're using the 125 predictions. Okay, now let's look at our results. We made 120K, 92 long, 27 short. Average trade was 255, which is 394 long, 116 short. 25K drawdown, which isn't really that good. Periodic returns, not really well recently. Had a good 2016, though. Um, 15 and 14 were bad. Equity curve did well, and then in 2013, it kind of flattened out. Had a really bad 15 going into 16. And then from mid-16 up, it did okay. It's basically been flat. So not real impressive, but the results really aren't that bad. Um, now, let's look at the 250 length. Makes 125K, makes 5,000 more. 93 and 31. There's a little bit better in the short side. 131 in trade in the short side. 390, 260 overall. 66% winning trades overall. Drawdown is 16K. Drawdown is better. Period returns, again, hasn't done well recently. Didn't do good in 16, where the other one did great in 16. In 14 and 15, it made money where the other one lost money. It made money this first year when the other one lost money. So you can see that there is a difference where when one does well, the other one doesn't. So this is why we could do, use something like equity curve feedback. Now the advantage of equity curve feedback is that we're not really curve fitting. We're, we're coming up with a set of rules to, to when do we switch or we combine or we average or we do some sort of voting scheme. As long as we're using the same rules in multiple models or in, in an individual model and we always use similar schemes, um, we can count on the fact that it's worked for this market as well as other markets, that particular scheme. So here we have the 125 length and the 250 length. And we're going to use our voting scheme system. It's a very simple system. We're going to take the predictions, which are in data 2 for the 125, and the predictions that are in data 3 for the 250, and feed them through our P&L simulator, which is part of our equity curve feedback product. We're then going to take the equity curve and subtract it from the average equity curve going back for so many bars. And we do that for both sets of predictions. Now, if our first difference, which is our prediction, our 125 length prediction, um, if that equity curve is, momentum is higher than the equity curve momentum for the 250 prediction, then we take that first prediction and we set it to PRED. If, on the other hand, our 250 length prediction is doing better, then we use that one. And we have very simple rules. Our prediction is greater than zero, where again, because this is a equity system, ES is, acts more like a stock, it's a stock index, close is less than open, 
And here's another interesting filter. We're going to require one of the two equity curves momentums to be positive to take a trade. And then we do the, the mirror image on the short side. We're, we've got a negative prediction. Close is greater than open. But once again, we're requiring one of the two equity curves to be positive. Greater than or equal to zero for the sign. That means one of the two equity curves has to be positive. Very, very simple voting scheme. So you ask, well, does something this simple actually improve our results? Well, let's look at it. Okay, if you remember, we made 120 and 125. We now make 148. That's 104 on the long side, 44K on the short side. 71% winning trades on the long side, 61 on the short side. Um, our short trades were in the low hundreds before. Now they're 249. We're almost $600. We're 587 on the long side, 14 overall. Drawdown is 19K. Not too, too bad. Profit? Well, now we're profitable every year. Because what we did is, in the year is the original system that, that the 125 model did badly, and the, and the 250 did well, after a little bit of time of doing badly with the 125, the system switched and used the 250. Because the equity curve um, momentum on the 125 was less than the equity curve momentum on the 250, so it knew the 250 is doing better. I will switch to it. And that produced much better results. And you can see from the equity curve that we don't have that big giant period where it's flat. It still has a little bit of problem here in this, in this um, late 14 through 16 period. But as we stack different models and develop more complex schemes that do this equity curve feedback, like the inner market model we presented, where instead of where we had three or four different models that we were using, you could see that this approach of using equity curve feedback to do regime switching in our Magarch models is a very powerful concept and something that will allow you to develop a whole new class of predictive systems that once was reserved for the largest hedge funds.